This year, Miramax Films takes great pride in extending to you an advance invitation to celebrate New Year's Eve at the Monsignor Hotel. Where a dozen of the most unusual guests ever will check in. We have reservations. And a lone bellhop named Dead on his first day on the job. All you have to do is hold the fort and the night's cake. Okay. Is in for the night of his life. Okay, Dad, what's the problem? I haven't got a problem. I've got problems. Plural. My children are staying here tonight watching TV. Get a bottle opener. If something happens to my children, they wouldn't want to be you. The five of us are a coven. A coven of witches. An oven full of witches. A coven of witches. Tell me that's not a face you can trust. I can't handle this hotel by myself. Are you saying my wife cheats on me? I've got to get out of here. We want you to. I am not gonna cut off Norman's little. Hmm? Hell of a night, huh, Ted? I'm stuck in a situation here which I can possibly begin to explain. Tim Ross, Antonio Banderas, Jennifer Beals, Valeria Golino, Madonna, Ioni Sky, Lily Taylor, Marissa Tomei, and Tamlin Tomita in a new film from directors Allison Anders, Alexander Rockwell, Robert Rodriguez, and Quentin Tarantino. Four rooms. I've had a real bad night. Oh. Really? Welcome in, everybody, to That Movie Show. Mike Went, Liam Strike. Hi-ho. Bill Neville is in uh, Texas right now, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, he is at a graduation. Not his own graduation, oh. just a graduation. Just a, just a Texas graduation. Yeah. You know, Bill is a big enthusiast of higher learning. Mm. So he just he he just trolls random graduations. Yeah, he just well see what happens is for that. he likes going to the graduations. It's a college graduation. It's Fair higher enough. education, okay. so right. they're all legal. All right. uh, but he likes going to those graduations because he he just wants he likes to party. Ah, Bill likes you. to party. He likes and, to relive those college. Yeah, days. so okay, so, so that's where Bill is. But we're here and we're talking. Four rooms. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Yeah, mm, yeah. Because when you get to listen to this, if you're not, yeah. if you're not smart enough to follow us and go live, <laughs> right? Okay, because right. we are doing this actually on Facebook Live today. Yes, we are. Uh, but yeah, once once this drops, it will be New Year's. It will. Uh, and this film obviously takes place on New Year's Eve, and it was. <laughs> but funnily enough, it was released Christmas Day, nineteen ninety five. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, it had a budget of $4 million. It brought back 4.2 at the box office. So they just squeaked by by breaking even. Uh, but this, I don't, I don't think this was movie was made because they were like, oh, we're going to make huge bank at the box. No. Office. After watching this movie, the fact that this movie broke even is exactly what I was expecting. Right. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, this is that type of movie. It's a break even movie. It's a very, uh, it's, it's a very niche audience. It's like right. what Tarantino and Rodriguez did with Grindhouse. Right. And. I think that the big takeaway from this movie was just like, this is a bunch of film people getting together being like, let's make a movie. They literally had just finished uh, Pulp Fiction and, Re and uh, Desperado, respectively. Yeah. And they're like, okay, well, let's get a couple other people together and we'll make a movie. Yeah, we'll just make something else. It'll be kind of fun. Nowadays, this movie would probably be more popular than ever because everything's an anthology series now. Right. Uh, but it also, it was directed by, obviously, Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez, Alexander Rockwell, and Allison Anders directed and wrote the other two portions of the four rooms, the other two yes. rooms, if you will. Yes. Uh, stars Tim Roth as Ted the Bellhop, yeah. along with Antonio Banderas, Jennifer Beals, Paul Calderon, Sammy Davis, Valeria Galino, Madonna, David Provo, Ioni Sky, Lily Taylor, Marissa Tomei, Tamlin Tamita, Kathy Griffin, a partridge in a pear tree, and eh. Bruce... Willis and Madonna again, and Madonna. because we have to talk about that Madonna's in this movie. Uh, yeah, Madonna was uh, it was just '90s Madonna. Yeah, this wasn't. I haven't gone crazy it, and married Guy Ritchie yet, Madonna. No, which is my favorite Madonna. Okay, Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie is one of my favorite directors, mm -hmm. and her marriage to ruined him. Oh yeah, ruined him and his filmmaking, in my opinion. Oh yeah, I mean he he did greatly. Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Snatch. Mary Madonna. 
I'm on a beach doing some weird movie with her. Yeah, it was weird. That's what happened. Yeah, but I do like Rock and Roller. Rock and Roller was great. That's I probably my favorite that. one. He did the Sherlock ones too, right? He did the do Downey the Sher- Sherlock yeah, ones. Okay. Yeah, I just like that internal monologue sort of thing that he's got going on. It's a lo- it's a ton of fun. Go watch Guy Ritchie movies. There you go. Uh, but right now we're talking <laughs> four rooms, and we start off. We are introduced to Ted the Bellhop. Yeah, Ted the Bellhop, and in a very fun '90s animated sequence. Yeah, it it was a fun like Pink Panther esque, mm-hmm, very like open. Yeah, and like and not not that nonsense with Beyonce. Not that one. I purged that, and I was in that movie. <laughs> oh God, I didn't see that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was the I purged the, it from my memory, and I was in it. <laughs> the classic, the classic Pink Panther. Yeah. Uh, had that very fun opening, and it was uh, very reminiscent of that. Yeah, it was actually. Uh, you know, the Ted the Bellhop is is bringing people to their rooms, mm-hmm. and, and different nonsense is happening, kind of foreshadowing what's going on for yeah. the rest. A lot, a lot of animated yeah. shenanigans. Yeah, animated shenanigans. Um, it was also, the, the score was very, literally 95. Yeah. Uh, it was very similar to the Get Shorty score. Right. Um, and it's that, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, it's kind of a... It was when Jazz Swing came back yeah. into the 90s. It's like a jazzy, doo-woppy, boop of that type of stuff. Yeah. Right, um, and we get uh, Ted. He's uh, he's being introduced to, to his mentor. I, it seems like this is his first night on the job. It seems like it's his first night or his first night alone. I think I think that might be it, or at least it's definitely his first New Year's alone. Right, uh, and and it is New Year's Eve at the uh, was it Monsignor Hotel? Yeah, the Monsignor Hotel. The Monsignor Hotel, and uh, he's he's explaining all the rules. You know, do, basically. Again, more foreshadowing. Right. Because everything, um, I believe the actor's name is uh, something Lawrence. Like, I think Matt Lawrence or something. <laughs> Matt he Lawrence was, was from uh, <laughs> one of the Lawrence brothers. That was Martin Lawrence. <laughs> no. Martin! Different Lawrence brothers. Well, this guy. Whoever... Joey Lawrence's <laughs> younger brother. <laughs> Joey Lawrence, really? From, yeah. From Blossom? From Blossom. Yeah, okay. they had a short-lived TV show. He, Matt Lawrence was also in uh, oh, Cyber Samurai Super Squad or something now like I, that. And it. Boy Meets World. Fair enough. Well, this That's uh, my Matt Lawrence trivia segment. I want to say this guy's name is also Matt Lawrence. I'll tr- might be Mark Lawrence. It's something Lawrence. But uh, the way uh, he's connected to the Tarantino-verse is, and Rodriguez, I guess, he was the uh, desk clerk in From Dust Till Dawn. Okay. That when Clooney's ringing the bell, he, he he's all pissy. He's like, what the hell you want? And Clooney's like, I want a fucking room, you old bastard. Yeah, right. Like, oh, I don't know. I want I want the service that this building provides. Right. You're, you're running a motel. I want a fucking room. Uh, but they're basically playing the same type of guy. Yeah, right. Same time. There's a surly old man who's just like, oh, don't, don't fuck the help or whatever. You know. Yeah, like right. That. These are the rules. Don't feed the mugwai after midnight. <laughs> exactly. Don't feed that Cantonese squirrel. Exactly. Don't get it wet. The Cantonese speaking squirrel. That oh, Gremlins. That movie show. Newagentsize dot com. Um, so we get to the honeymoon suite. People yeah. are people are arriving. Yeah. The guests of the honeymoon suite are arriving. I forget the exact order, but it's each one is weirder than the next. Oh yeah, of course. And then that one girl that's just carrying a bunch of sticks. Uh, that was Lee Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. The one that's carrying the bunch of sticks, she's just like, oh, by the way. Um, I think it was a broom, technically. Yeah, it was, it was a, definitely it was a like broom. like an old Hocus Pocus broom. Yeah, she was just like, I'm going to go. Is, did they start yet? <laughs> <laughs> Have they started? I mean, I'm looking for the room for making love. Ooh. All right, you must be with the rest of the weirdos. Yeah. Uh, it was also really funny because I'm watching it, and it's just like, hey, how come two of the four of you are getting topless? I mean, Madonna <laughs> makes sense. And she wasn't. Uh, right. Well, no. The reason why Madonna, because if you're oh, going to. Oh, because of the budget. Because of the budget. Yeah. Look, you can't pay Madonna no. in the 90s no. enough to take her top off. No, I, I don't even think she had. Uh, no, it was it was 95. Britney, I was going to say, it wasn't around the time that they did the Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. Yeah, Freeway. no. They, they were Mouseketeers at that point. Right. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, no, that would have been huge news if Madonna at that point had, <laughs> had done it with Britney Spears and <laughs> Yeah, Aguilera. yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> that's a different type of news. She's into the experimental shit. Yeah. Um, but no. So Hit me, baby, one more time. Am I right? <laughs> We got uh, Madonna is uh, her girlfriend is Alicia Witt. Yes. Uh, and <gasps> Which. Yeah. OK, go on. Go on. Uh, so we'll, we'll get to what. <laughs> yeah. She she gets even weirder. Um, and basically, basically, they're a coven of witches. Yes. 
Uh, as not, you not, do. Not an oven full of witches, a coven of witches. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and they're trying to conjure up the spirit of... Their goddess. Their goddess, Diana. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who I thought was Wonder Woman until they were like, no, it's the stone lady behind me. <laughs> The blonde. Yeah, it's the blonde stone porn star. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who was basically imprisoned in the hotel? So, yeah. So, the story <laughs> goes that she was there on her honeymoon. Yes. And a, uh, a rival uh, c- placed a curse on her mm-hmm. that she would be turned to stone. Okay. So, she gets turned to stone on her wedding night and then... Um, 40 years ago. 40 years prior. Yes. So they gotta they gotta reverse the spell, yeah, with a bunch of weird shit, yeah, tears, um, yeah, cl- sweat collect- from thighs, sweat from men's thighs, uh, tears of herself, yeah, uh, years of a year's worth of tears. What else was there? So much of weirdness. Yeah, well, the big one was uh, the semen. The yes, <laughs> ah, of course, and and it's funny because the sky was, was supposed to get uh, semen. But uh, she swallowed. Yeah, which was so funny. As you be- do. Because it seemed like all of these th- rhyme, like these rhyming, like s- things that they like, are lyricists. Yeah, they were like really into it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then she says that she swallowed. And I was just like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, di- that didn't seem like that was supposed to be part of the spell. Nope. And so it's like, did you come up with that rhyme to tell them that you swallowed and didn't bring the semen? Is that what you're saying? It's a lot of effort just to be like, I fucked up. Yeah. Like, she could have just said it when they started. Right. Instead of going through the whole rigmarole of taking yeah. off your top and doing a line dance and then yeah. doing the little the rhyming thing. And especially because you're the last one, you know it's going to be a letdown. Yeah, right. And you right. know Valeria Galena was going to b- breathe fire. Yeah. That happened. That was that crazy. Happened. That freaking like, happened. Oh, they really are magical. This is going to get weird. It was originally a $3 million budget. Then she's like, oh, I want breathing fire. Mine. Yeah, or I guess we're going to. And in 1995, <laughs> that's going to cost you a million dollars. Right, right. I still, it, to, it still makes it weird that it's just like, again, why are two of the four of you topless? <laughs> also, what were they planning to do? Everybody seems to order weird shit from Ted, which I know is just to get Ted back into the room for plot's sake. Yeah. But what were they planning to do with the, the rosemary and, and a bunch of other stuff from the kitchen? Yeah, right. <laughs> what were they expecting to do? That, that's actually what Because he shows back up and he's like, I got the rosemary. She's like, oh, fuck that shit. What? It wasn't, I'm guessing it was important. Unless you're well, just be- going to start cooking in the hotel room. It was very specific. Yes. That's that's probably the biggest thing. Is like, it has to be fresh rosemary. Yeah, why is it, why do we need, what was it? It was like Himalayan salt or kosher salt. Or kosher salt. It yep. was just like, why Why does it need to be that specific if you don't care? <laughs> yeah, and nobody uses it. We'll get to the Tarantino one, but he ordered a bunch of weird shit too that uh, he never used. But there, yeah. because I, I know there was part, partially a thing. Yeah, there's a couple of things in there that I'm like, how are we, what's happening with this? Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the issue that I had with this segment yes. ultimately comes with there is so much happening mm-hmm. that we don't see and through the rest of the anthology never figure out. Right. Because Madonna's girlfriend, who their first interaction is so funny, she's like, uh, you're not my daughter. And she's like, tonight I am or something like that. Oh, no, no. Um, she's no. The, the line, I think, was uh, they were Madonna was bitching to Alicia Witt about smoking. Yeah. She said, Stop smoking. And Alicia Witt says, you're not my mother. Madonna says, yes, I am. And then, of course, as Ted's crossing screen, then why are you having sex with me? Yeah, right. Whammo. <laughs> Whammo. Uh, yeah. Uh, so she's not in on being a witch. No. She's, she's just, just the girlfriend. The just there for the hang. Yeah. She's just the girlfriend. Yep. It's New Year's Eve. We're just hanging. In. Yeah. And Weirdness s- is happening. <laughs> yes. Very weird stuff. And so then they leave. Mm-hmm. And they every te- they leave Ted alone. Well, they got to get it. To get banged. Get yeah. They gotta He's got to get banged. Got to get that jism. Yeah. <laughs> so they all leave and the deed is done. The, yes. de- the deed is done. They fuck in the cauldron. Yes, exactly. Luckily, they did because she obviously has no self control. Right at all. At all. She uh, she couldn't control herself the first time. Can't control herself the second time. Fuck in the cauldron. Just let him yeah. blow her in the cauldron or whatever the fuck is happening. Yeah, whatever happens. Yeah, sex in the cauldron. I don't it's, know. It's less of a faux pas than sex in the champagne room because, yes, as we all know, definitely. there's no sex in the champagne room. But there's a lot more bleach in the cauldron. There's definitely a lot more bleach in the cauldron. We and hope. 
and the sweat <laughs> of men's thighs. God, so uh, but then they all come back. Five of them. Five yeah. men's thighs. Yeah, five. Ew, that's <laughs> a lot. That's a lot. Were you at like? Did you go to like a YMCA She's, men's rec league? You went to a firehouse. Oh God. Oh. Especially like after they get off a call and they're and, taking their their yeah. their fireproof shit off and they're just yeah. all hot and, and she's just and they're all hopped up on yeah. chili and she's just got her turkey assume? baster. She's like, all right, let me squeeze this thigh off. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Nice. Gross. Nice. Uh, but they all come back having had some sort of whirlwind adventure that we didn't see. Well, they were no, they were they were. Uh, it's weird because they were waiting outside the door. Well, they all because Madonna makes the comment that that if she doesn't get it soon, I'll go in there and get it. To which you know, because she's a lesbian, that would be a first for you. Is thrown out. Yeah. Um, so so then it comes back, but they and do come back as if they have had like a journey. They leave like the yeah. rest of them leave. I think because we cut back to the room and she ends up like you know, it's like let's do this, and he's like, yeah, I'm in. You know what I bet happened. They went upstairs to Lawrence Bender's party and probably used up all the ice. That's why he's calling down after this yeah. for the ice. Because when they come back into the room, the girlfriend, her whole thing is, is just like, yeah, I want to be a witch now. I, now I'm now I'm into it. Yeah. Now. And it's like, what? What, what happened? I want to see the deleted scene in the hallway. I want to know what happened that you're now, even though you're having sex with Madonna. Right. Who is clearly all in on the witch nonsense. Yes. You're now in on the witch nonsense? Her, by the way, Madonna's outfit. Wow, how she fit into that. Um, oil. Just It seems so like... Rubbery? How do you move in there? It was uh, brought straight from uh, the scene with the gimp in Pulp Fiction. I, seriously. like it looks. First of all, it looks painted on. It, yeah. But just walking seems like a chore. Yeah, seemed like you're fighting gravity. Like It's almost like, all right, I'm going to plant myself where I'm going to be for the whole night at the party. Just paint it on me there. Yeah, right. And then but, I won't move. And then I will. Post me up next to the bar, paint on my dress, and leave me. And leave me be. <laughs> uh, but then the funniest part is I'll they come here. back in. They come back in, and they're like, yeah, let's finish this spell. Right. And yep. so... So Alicia Witt pops her top off as you do. But, but it's very funny because I'm like, so you're under 18 because you have tape on your nipples. Do you think that's the only logical explanation I, I could come it was just up a with? Weird choice. Yeah, the only thing that I could think of was that she was under eighteen at the time, hmm. and we couldn't actually show nudity. Maybe because I just thought it was—I thought it was part of her character choice. Uh, why? 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 <laughs> why? Why, uh, why is any of this happening? Yeah, I know, but that seems very nonsensical. It did, and it—it it takes you out of it for a second, but it also took a couple of the the witches out because they're just like, what? That's why I thought it was a character choice as opposed to a legal choice because right. they drew attention to it. Right. I, f- I feel if it was a legal choice, they just wouldn't have done it. Yeah. That seems kind of risky even to do that if, if she's underage. Yeah. Uh, let me see. She was born in 75. No, she definitely wasn't. She was 20. Yeah. Oh, then I have no idea. This was 95. It shot in 94 at best. That puts her at least 19. Yeah. 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 Okay. Character choice. Character nice. choice. Good on you. Method witching. Good on you. Well done, Alicia Witt. So, they do their spell. Yep. Goddess they, comes back. Thing breaks. Uh, Diana comes out of the cauldron. And we never talk about this again. She showed up in a post credit scene. Oh, okay. Did you, did you know I that? I did not get You to didn't the... stick around for the whole... No. See? Again, trend setting. Yeah. Marvel stole it from four rooms. See, That's, everybody's all yeah. about the Marvel post credits. They didn't know they got it from four rooms. Who got it from Ferris Bueller? Who got it from Smokey and the Bandit? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Sorry goes back to Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she she does, and it's literally just she's in the elevator when the when the, after they go down and yeah. after the ending, the elevator yeah. door opens back up and Diana's just standing there in a robe. Oh, literally, that's it. Oh, she kind of gives a little, basically the same little smirk she gives at the end of this, yeah. this sequence. Like, let's bang. So, so Ted's back down at his desk at the you know the bellhop right. station, yeah, the host desk, whatever you want to call it. Check yep. it. Uh, he's blowing uh, very cool smoke rings out of cherry, as you do. Yeah. And uh, red apple cigarettes make their appearance. Yes, they do. Tarantinoism. And the phone rings. And yes, it's uh, super producer Lawrence Bender, who produced yep. all of Tarantino's work. Yep. Reservoir, from Reservoir Dogs, I believe he's still producing his movies today. Uh, he's out of make, ice. Making his cameo, he wants some ice. Hmm. So uh, He can't remember what room they're in. Re- I'm sure it's not his. Yeah. But him and some other guy who's drunk and blowing smoke in his face. It's like, what, what's the room number? 409. 404. Are you sure? No, 404. 409? Four. And Ted's... I... 
Tim Ross accent and voice in this and in Hateful Eight are two of, and he's, you know, it's almost the same thing, but it's one of my favorite accents ever. Yeah. Just the way he whimsically has that British accent. For a for, sir. I, sir. Yeah. And it's like a booth moment. It's just that it was so was, great that they got a Brit to do this. Right. It definitely adds to the role. Uh, I just felt like he was a little too manic. Oh, he's very manic. I like he was a little too manic. I would have even if I we just had him like in between stuff mm. bump a line, it would have made more <laughs> sense. It was just like, why are you this tightly wound? Well, I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, that's just if te- anything, you just had sex with a witch. Yeah, you did. That happened. You should be very calm. That just happened. <laughs> that just <laughs> happened. Shake a peek. God, we got to go down the nights. <laughs> yeah, we got to get there. So Ted grabs his bucket of ice, um, heads upstairs to room 404. Yeah. In another weird moment, he uh, he's smoking a cigarette, chewing gum at the same time. Yeah. He puts the cigarette out in the ice bucket. Yeah. And then takes his gum out of his mouth and sticks that also in the ice yeah, bucket. Yeah, he doesn't like these people. He's never met these people. They were just dicks on the phone. They were dicks on you the phone. You know what? That, that's probably it. That's it. They were dicks on the phone. Drunken so. party goers, they're not going to notice a put out. They're going to put their yeah. own cigarette and gum in this anyway. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. So he's just a dr- You know what? I'm with d- you on that because yeah. I was thinking the couple in the room. I wasn't thinking he was going up to the party room. Yeah. But when we open it up, yeah. oh boy, do we have a can of worms. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, he shows up and there's just a silhouette of a person. Yep. And there's like, oh, the it's taken aback because he was called by a, a New Year's Eve party, right? So he's expecting, you know, music and lights and smoking and just right wall to wall, asses and to elbows, and nothing. It's dark. Yep. And so the light comes on, and there's a woman tied to a chair. Yep. And a man with a gun, a big old gun, a big old gun. Uh, so yes, this is written and directed by Alexander Rockwell. This segment, yeah, uh, who is actually married to the lovely Jennifer Beals, who was tied to the chair. Yep. And David Proville, uh, who was uh, Richie April in The Sopranos. Okay. There you go. That's that reference. He's the man with the gun. Yeah. And <laughs> he's got some issues. Yeah. So apparently, the wife has been cheating on him. But it's also kind of Maybe. hinted. It's also kind of hinted that this might just be a sex thing. It's kind of their thing, I think. Yeah, it's because because she alludes to it that this has happened before, right? So, and by this has happened before, meaning they've checked into a hotel and taken a bellhop hostage. Yeah, and done weird sex stuff with them. Yeah, as you do. Because I think I think it's a weird situation where they're like, yeah, we're gonna get the bellhop in here, mm-hmm. and then we're going to basically have this like cheating scenario and then I'm going to force you to have sex with my wife while I watch. But also they called the wrong per well they they they're taking hostage the wrong person as well. Yeah. Because they clearly called this Theodore guy. Right. Uh who shows up at the end of it. Uh so Theodore does you know opens up the door. Am I in the right room? Oh, you're in the right fucking room, Theodore. Ted Theodore. Ugh. Yeah, close enough. Shenanigans ensue. Siegfried and Angela here <laughs> yeah. are playing some weird shit. And now Ted had also just gotten fucked by a coven of witches. Yeah. So that happened. He's, yeah. He's off to a weird start. He's having a weird night. Um, Siegfried is is popping pills. Yeah, all kinds of pills. With a big old gun in his face. Yeah. Uh, and Drinking a bottle of Jack straight. There is that. Good man. And uh, basically, they start to force Ted into this scenario. Right. Like... Making him say things that he doesn't want to say. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, what, was the, what was the line uh, about? Uh, he, was, he was basically, he was, oh, he's making him apologize. Yeah. He, he's like, I, I've ne- and literally he said, I've never met you people. You're <laughs> fucking strangers. Yeah. We all start out as strangers. Theodore. Well, that was the funniest <laughs> like, part. Oh, damn you people. <laughs> that was the funniest part about that. She's just like, look, here's the deal. I need you to roll with this. She was so, because oh, uh, David Provo like, basically dies on the carpet. Yeah. He, he, his heart bursts and he hits the hits the carpet. Yes. So he so Ted tr- starts doing charades with her. Awesome. Yeah, right. Just take the gag out, this you is, idiot. This is why Tim Roth had to be so manic. Right. To do a scene like this. Right. To get a scene like this off. And he's just kind of like, you know, the three words, two words. And she's like, take the fucking gag out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, just take, take the gag out of my mouth so we can talk. out of my mouth so we can talk here. Yeah. So he, she tells him, oh, well, his, his nitro pills are, are in the bathroom, which for a hotel bathroom medicine cabinet, had, again, a lot of weird shit in there. Yeah. It was like 
it was very li- it was too lived in for a hotel. It was it was too lived in for very a hotel. lived in for a hotel. Uh, we also get a phone call that yeah. Siegfried takes, uh, and this was one of the things for the each one of these segments is so on its own. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wish that there was more interconnectivity sure. to them, uh, but this was one of the better interconnected right, bits because it gets paid off. Because it gets paid off. Um, again, the, the back and forth because we only get one side of the conversation, right? And and he's he's like, no, we don't get any fucking needles, just a big gun. Yeah. All right, as you do, as you do, and. Um, so he's looking for the pills in this yeah. weird, dirty, way too lived in to be a hotel bathroom. Right. Can't find it. Comes back. He tells Angela, where's the pills? I can't find them. Well, this was after he tried to escape out the fourth story window. Oh, see, I thought, okay. Cause, so he didn't come back in. No, he comes back in after he tries okay. to escape. So so he, he can't find the pills, sees the window, hops up on the toilet. Positions himself in one of the weirdest ways possible, but a very cool shot. Yeah. Uh, and he's hanging half out the window, half in the bathroom. And he starts having a conversation with the man sitting in the room above him. Who is the man that ordered the ice? Lawrence Bender. Yep. And he's sitting there. He's saying, I'm in this situation. I can't fucking get out of it. Blah, 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 blah. Finally, like, sir, are you okay? <laughs> the best pre-puke moment. He just looks at me and goes... Nice <laughs> vomit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was great. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so he scurries back into the thing. Yeah. The funniest part about him trying to get in or out of that window was like, hey, that's not how windows work. Also, you're on the fourth floor of a hotel. Yeah. Where are you going? Where are you planning to go. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a fire escape. It's a little bathroom window. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was what it was. Was what it was. And so he gets back in there, and then you know she he can't find the pills, and so he tells Angela that. Yep. And Angela is like, "Oh, we have to save him. I love him." Yep. And then so, that's where the husband pops <laughs> back up. I knew you loved me. He pops back up right as Ted's like, "I'll get help." Turns. Boom, and he's just giggling and jiggling. And, yeah. Oh, he's feeling those pills now, man. Uh, they had some delayed reactions. Yeah, and so then he uh, he tells her how much that she loves him and then mm. everything's okay and all this other stuff. Right. And then she proceeds to just degrade him. Oh, yeah. And that's where it was like, oh, yeah, no, this is just a sex thing for them. Definitely. Especially when she starts talking about the size of Ted's dick. Yeah. And how huge it is. And how his isn't comparable. <laughs> Another great moment is just is, is David Pro- Provo turning from Angela to Ted and going, he's got a huge cock. He's got a huge cock. Show it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's never seen it before. Show it to me. <laughs> like, what? It's a, very, very, it's a much funnier, less creepy moment, uh, like uh, in Boogie Nights, when, yeah. when the colonel meets Dirk for the first time. Yeah. Oh, I'm the colonel. Good to meet you. Frank, uh, what, what's his name? <laughs> Whatever Burt Reynolds' name is. Yeah. Jack. Jack. Jack says you got a great big cock. I'd like to see it sometime. I'd like to see it someday. Casual meeting of two Ooh. people, as you do. Ooh. So, uh, she's just running down yeah. every possible variation of of uh how to say penis yeah slang for penis basically yeah penis slang and ted sees an opening and he bounces yeah he just bounces he, he well because bounce. he's got to get to room 309 that is true no we haven't got the call yet though no but he's got to get to room 309 because this is happening 309 is happening while 404 is happening this is true um Actually, that, that is true. Good, very good. I, f- I always forget that that's happening at the same exact time. Uh, so he bounces, runs into Theodore. Yes. And Theodore you asks, hear as Ted's walking away, knock, 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 opens up the door. Hey, I'm Theodore. Am I, am I in the right room? Let's t- like basically. Yeah, right. Just they, they the restart of it. Yeah. Let's, so. let's not beleaguer the fact that you have no sense of timing, Theodore. The yeah. fact is you're here. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Gun. Cock Creepy. Face. Oh, sex stuff. Yep. They all banged at the end. Um, so I believe do we go back to the four oh nine room? So I they like zoom out and like the four oh nine like the it's four oh and then that second number is missing. Mm. So we never know if that was actually four oh nine or not. Gotcha. So then we get back down and he gets the call. Yeah. From room three oh nine. Right. So we've rewound a little bit. Correct. 
uh, and this one is written and directed by Robert Rodriguez. And that's how it explains Antonio Banderas. Yes. <laughs> because, of course, Antonio Banderas is in this movie if Robert Rodriguez is directing. So is Selma Hayek in this segment. Really? Yeah. We'll see if you found her. Uh, this this segment's called The Misbehaviors. Uh, yeah. they, they had just finished Desperado. Like I said, Desperado and Pulp Fiction wrapped around the same time, and they kind of just rolled everybody right, right. this one. Whoever was available, come on out. We're going to have some fun. Um, so... Husband and wife, Antonio Banderas, Tamla and Tamita, are uh, ha- getting ready for their New Year's Eve party. Everybody's yeah. dressed to the nines, tuxes and dresses, and they're combing the kids' hair. Antonio Banderas is having way too much fun smoking his cigarette. Yeah, way too much fun. Uh, the weird part is is that they dress the kids up in suits and party attire yeah. and then leave them there. Yeah, I think it was It was definitely, there was a moment where Antonio Banderas saw that his, his wife wasn't having a good time. And he actually even says, he's like, you want to have a good time? We'll leave the kids here. Because they make reference to it. Yeah. The, the kids say, what the fuck did we get all dressed up for? Yeah. You know, we're just going to sit here and watch TV. Um, but he, I think he was realizing that the wife wasn't feeling going out with the kids and, and having yeah. that type of night. So he, she wanted to go out and have a real adult New Year's Eve party. And he's like, okay, fine. And that just happened to coincide with, Mr. Bellhop. Yeah, the Bellhop showing up. Ted the Bellhop showing up with the champagne. Right. As you do. As you do, of course. And uh, and Ted's sitting there trying to present the champagne to this, you know, as described later, this scary Mexican gangster dude. <laughs> yes, scary Mexican <laughs> gangster dude. Um, and he's like, well, put that shit down. And he's like, all right, you want to make 500 bucks? He's like, sure. Yeah. How about 300 bucks? Sure. And they lay out that basically Ted's going to play babysitter. Yeah, right. Uh, mm. Ted then, in a great back and forth, uh, basically talks his way back into the 500. Right. Uh, there's a little bit of, are you calling me a fucking liar? And uh, the bandejo word is thrown around a lot. Yeah. Which, God, I love that. Um, of course. Of course. And <laughs> basically, he pays him 500 bucks. I think he got 250 up front. Yeah. Okay. 250 up front. And mom and dad... Take off for their swinging night on the town. Yeah. And the kids are left, all dressed up, (laughs) TV playing. Fun in fact about what's on the TV, um, it was not the cartoon, but there was a black and white, and it was actually Robert Rodriguez's first short film, Bedhead. Oh, okay. And it was his his sister on the TV. You can find the short. I believe it's on the Desperado Blu-ray or DVD. So oh, good for that. It is out there, or you can just, you know, I'm sure it's on YouTube. Yeah, or probably on YouTube at this point. Uh, uh, um, so Ted lays out the plan, because he doesn't yeah. want to be fucking babysitting these kids all No. Day. You're going to call if you need something, yeah. but that's it. Call if there's an emergency. I'll be back up in a little bit with uh, milk and cookies. They don't want him to wake up for the fireworks or the midnight and no, fuck that shit. Yeah. Put him to bed at, like, what do you say, 10? Yeah, something like that. Put him to bed by 10, which I don't even know what time it is at this point. It's got to yeah. be close to that. It, yeah, I mean, they got to be up for, like, a half hour. And uh, and so Ted's like, uh, give me a call if there's an emergency. And then, of course, the daughter makes her dominance known. We're going to call you for anything. Yeah. That's... My dad's paying you 500 bucks. Cool. <laughs> Yay. This is, this is going to be my night with these fucking kids. Yeah, right. And so there's some back and forth, and they're making fun of the feet and the smelling of the feet, and which gets paid off later in a yep. great way. Yep. Uh, and... They keep calling him because they they find a huge needle. They yes. find a huge needle, and that's when they call room four oh nine. Yep. Because she wants to see if she asked the kid to 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 just pull out two random three net random numbers. Yeah, and I think it was four oh four. Yeah, Maybe but it was 409. but either way, either he way. calls she Siegfried. Calls Siegfried. Yeah. And so that's the second half of the phone call that we just heard. So now we know our timelines are linked up. Yeah. And so they find the needle. (laughs) Basically, they're annoying our good bellhop Ted. Very much so. I mean, the kids are, they've, they've, They've popped the champagne, so they're drinking the champagne. The kids, the son is smoking all kinds of cigarettes. Yeah, all kinds. Uh, They've flipped around and found an adult channel. Yep. The the woman on TV dancing, that's Selma Hayek. Oh, okay. Yep. There, right. That's where she fit in. Um, Interesting. Yep, that was uh, that was her role in this. All right, and they're, yeah, they're just running amok. Right, amok, 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 the, the amok, kids, amok. The kids making a target with lipstick on the paintings, and they're gonna do darts with the needle. It's just insanity. It's absolute insanity. They and are misbehaviors. Right, they are. And so Ted comes up, and Ted uh, is like, "Here, here's the milk and the cookies." And she, oh, at that point, the kids have found the dead body. Oh yeah. 
And so hey, there's a dead hooker in the bed. Yeah, there's a dead hooker in the box spring of the mattress. Or a dead whore. A dead whore. A dead whore in the box spring of the bed. Yeah, and so she comes up and she, because uh, she calls him and she's like, "There's a dead hooker in the mattress, and you're not, you don't clean this place." Uh, Robert Rodriguez's cousin. Oh, it's the hooker. Is the hooker? Yeah. So basically, there's a confrontation. He, she stabs him in the leg with the needle. Well, okay. So, so what happened in between was he put him to bed. Yeah, he put him to bed and he put this menthol. Oh, that's right. The he, menthol shit on their eyelids, and he said, "Don't open your. You can't open your eyes until the morning, or it will burn." Yeah. And the the girl asked, "Did you ever open your eyes?" He goes, "Yes, I did." Look at me now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm manic Ted. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. l- like normal children would do, they went to the bathroom and washed the shit off. Yeah, she just washed it off. Easy peasy. She washed it off. She grabbed her bottle of champagne, flipped on the nudie channel, and got back to business. Yeah. That's when they found the hooker. Yep. And that's <laughs> the funniest what- thing is that phone call after she calls him. How do you, how, did you open your eyes? Yeah. No, why aren't your eyes burning? <laughs> did you see, no, no, did you see the, did you see the dead body? Yes. Bullshit! You got the menthol on your eyes. You can't see shit. Go to sleep. <laughs> Click. Yeah. And she's like, I washed it off. Didn't you ever think of that? That's so funny. And that girl goes savage on him. Oh, yeah. Get absolutely. Your fucking ass up here because my dad's a big Mexican gangster that will put you in a bed right next to her. It's like, holy shit. Yeah, right. Oh. So Ted gets up and yeah. he's, he's, uh, he's all kinds of pissed off. Yeah. What's going on here? Now, we've been fucked by a coven of witches. We've had the Siegfried and Angela weird uh, sex yeah. and guns thing. Now we got these two little pieces of shit. He's pissed. Oh, yeah. And, Kicks in the door. And uh, he is just ahead of Antonio Banderas. Yeah, I mean steps. Like steps. Like he just got in the elevator right before. And so, yeah, they are, they're steps away from each other. So he's trying to quell this situation. What is happening? And sure enough, yeah, he finds the dead body. Blames the smell on the feet. She kicks over the bed. He vomits into the dead body. Yeah. S- keeps smacking the son with, who has a cigarette in his mouth. Smacks the cigarette out of his mouth. The room catches on fire, as you do. As you do. Uh, so now let's, let's paint a picture for those of you. you know, theater of the mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we'll paint the picture. So now there's a, there's a big red target on one of the paintings. The room... Is a blaze of fire. On fire. The whole fucking room, by the way. I didn't know uh, champagne was that flammable. But apparently but apparently he brought a bottle of grain alcohol and a champagne bottle, and it's just going up. So <laughs> yeah, the right. whole place is on fire. Ted is holding the leg of a dead whore <laughs> in the bed, and the girl has stabbed him yes. in the leg with the needle that they found, which I'm assuming the dead whore was using to overdose. Yes, correct. Awesome. And then Antonio Banderas walks in. Antonio Banderas, yeah, he, he, the door opens up. He's d- literally dragging his passed out wife. What a lightweight, because this all happened in less than an hour. Yeah, of course. Like, they must have shown up at the first bar. She did, like, four shots of roofies and went home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Cool. And he just looks It was the in. 90s. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> and uh, we didn't know it was bad for you back then. Hmm. And, <laughs> yeah, the whole room is just a fucking blaze. Antonio Banderas is processing the scene I just laid out for you. And in only Antonio Banderas type fashion, did they misbehave? Fire. Yeah. Fade out. Did they misbehave? Fade yeah. out. So I wonder if he got his money. Ah, you have to imagine no. Yeah. You have to imagine no. The kids weren't in bed. That was his one thing. Put him to bed before midnight. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. So, and I don't think at this point Ted gives a shit. No, he doesn't. He is bullshit. Ted's he's, he's going hauling ass down to the ba- back down. He's the quitting. Line. He's about to quit. He's got to call he Betty. He's quitting. He's calling his manager. He's going to quit. Mm-hmm. So he's going to call uh, his boss, Betty, yeah. who's played by Kathy Griffin, and he's going to quit. However, Margaret answers the phone at Betty's place. It's so funny. Margaret, played by Marissa Tomei. Yeah. Which hilariously... If you've seen any of the promo artwork for this, the cover of the DVD, the posters, she looks nothing like the way she looks. No, sh- no, not at all. She's very glammed up in all of the promo. She pictures. also she also looks like she's like in the movie. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's you know, part of the cast. And it's like, no, you're you're like a throwaway five minute interlude. She's a cameo at best. And yeah, and yeah she's one of the inter interludes. And just basically playing a, a stoner on New Year's Eve. At a party. At a party. Just answering the phone at Betty's house. It's gotta be like four AM. Everybody's yeah. passed out. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be. Which makes all the timelines fucked up. But I don't care. It's a fun movie. Well, so so th- it's actually well you think about it, it's just after midnight. I guess that makes some sense. You know, so you figure that there's a little bit of a gap while he's dealing with Antonio Banderas. Right. Because that ends at midnight, and now we're off to the next thing. So he deals with whatever's going on with, you know, the fire and the dead body. Sure. And, and so now... You can imagine he probably put the fire out. Yeah. Got an extinguisher at the very least. Right. Uh, you it, know. it wasn't quite as as run out and bail like the Siegfried situation. No, and um, and so now he has to, you know, he now he has to call the cops because the, there's a dead body. He's got to call somebody. Yeah, he's, you know, he's definitely not calling the cops. He's calling Betty. Has a prolonged conversation. Basically, he's he's laying out his night to Marissa Tomei. Right, and uh, that's where we get the you were fucked by the oven full of witches. <laughs> yeah, not an oven, a fucking <laughs> coven <laughs> of witches. <laughs> and she's like. I don't know, Ted. That doesn't sound too bad to me. He goes, well, actually, that was quite wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so then he lays out the Siegfried and Angela conversation. And Marissa Tomei in classic just stoner fashion. And she's like, so he held you at gunpoint and made you have sex with his wife? He's like, no, he thought he fucked his wife. I didn't fuck. She's like, you want to skip this part too, Ted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Then we get the, the scary Mexican gangster dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> poking his finger <laughs> in my chest. His hooligan kids set the fucking room ablaze. And there's a stinking corpse of a dead whore in the box spring of the bed. And here's me taking the fuck off right now. <laughs> yeah, right. And then and then that's where we get the call from the man from Hollywood. Chester Rush. Chester Rush. The penthouse. Big, big time director. And basically, Kathy Griffith just talks him into uh staying yeah she basically lays out the history of the monsignor hotel yeah. which basically during the golden age of hollywood was the spot for celebrities to be seen and it's it's kind of um it's the hollywood tower hotel uh, yeah i mean yeah basically it's a very similar backstory the hotel's a very similar backstory to the tower of terror it does yeah, yeah. you're about to die I never really thought of that You're about to get on an elevator and die. Your parents don't care about you. No, not not even a little bit. (laughs) That's my that's my Hollywood Tower of Terror. The the parents really didn't care. They left her with a nanny. Yeah, that you know what that's that might be a watch long we should do because I actually have the 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 Tower Tower of of Terror Terror DVD. Ooh, that's Um, fun. So we get the Chester Rush call. Yeah, and so she begs him to to do this. Look, you can leave, but you have to take care of him first. All they want is champagne. I'm sure. Yeah, you just have you to take care of him, and that's it. He's not gonna. He's not gonna tie you up. He's not gonna make you fuck a coven of witches. He's not gonna set the place on fire. He's not gonna put you in an oven of witches. Nope, not even an oven of witches. So just go get him champagne. Right. Cut so, to the man from Hollywood. Yeah, and written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. That one is uh, very fun. The thing that they talk about is, what was it, the man from Reno? Rio. Re- the man from Rio. Does not exist. Oh, that's too bad. I have looked many, many times. There is something that I believe it's similar to, and if you go- basically, if you Google Alfred Hitchcock, man from Rio, it will send you to what it's based on. Okay. So it is loosely based on a real Alfred Hitchcock special, uh, but the man from Rio with Steve McQueen and uh, Peter Laurie does not actually exist. Ah, that's it too was, bad. It was much like the Tower, Tower of Terror. It was made up of multiple things. things. Um, so, Chester Rush. Yeah. Not a director. No. Tarantino basically made himself Jerry Lewis. Yeah, right. He, he was the, he's the biggest movie star on the planet because his hit movie, wait for it, the Wacky Detective. Yeah, right. That's is a huge movie. It's a huge hit. It's a huge hit. The Wacky Detective. It was making money before TV, before paid TV, before free TV, before VHS. <laughs> yeah. It was making money. That's so it's so funny when he d- just dives into that. The Wacky Detective. The Wacky Detective. Fuck. And off. then and then <laughs> he's like and then he's got another one that's also insanely titled that uh, the dog catcher yeah the isn't it also the wacky dog catcher and and, and they do a t- and he's popping many bottles of crystal which yeah. he then later gets angry at someone else for yeah um 
But basically, he's sitting there with Ted's got a glass of Cristal and Tarantino's got the bottle of Cristal and he's he's like trying to toast right. the dog catcher. <laughs> yeah, the dog catcher just <laughs> So, but of course, he shows up. Yes, and, and he's he's curious as to why he's brought um, a ball of twine. Yep, a bucket of ice. Yep. A hatchet yep. as sharp as the devil himself. Which is also really funny because it's a meat cleaver, but go on. <laughs> um, a donut, which we find Tarantino just wanted to eat a donut in one bite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just houses that bad boy. He straight belushied that donut. Yeah. That was Straight up. Uh, yeah. A club sandwich, which was for Angela. Jennifer Beals is back. Yeah, she's Apparently, just there. Apparently, Siegfried passed out. She went to the pool and met the Chester Rush party down there, so she's just chilling in a robe. Yeah, and so now she's just up there mm-hmm. hanging out. And as you do, a, bl- oh, a block of wood. Yes. And a block of wood. OK. And we're also introduced to the man in the other room uh, screaming at his wife on the phone. Leo. Yeah. Leo. <laughs> now, for most of you who were looking this movie up maybe beforehand or something like that, didn't see he was in no promos. No, he was. He wasn't credited. Bruce Willis. Yeah. Just Bruce Willis is in that. Bruce Willis is not credited because he was violating a SAG rule for acting in this film for no money. Oh. So he took his name off the film. He was doing it as a complete 100% favor to Tarantino. Like yeah. I said, they had just wrapped Pulp Fiction. Right. Which everybody was, knew was going to be huge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So he was, and because acting for free violates a SAG rule, he agree, basically SAG agreed to not sue Bruce Willis if his name showed up nowhere in the credits. Right, you can pr- promote this movie. Yeah, there you go. So there's that. That's why he's there. But he's basically, uh, Leo is seems like a manager, agent, all, all around, keep Chester in line type of guy. Right. Um, Paul Calderon, who was also in Pulp Fiction, he played, uh, he played Paul. Yeah. The bartender in, in the, the Bruce Willis scene, actually. Yeah. Um, what is his character's name in this, though? Let's oh, it's something play. weird. Is it? Um, it's it's not. It can't be Paul. I think it might be. He can't just keep playing Pauls. Pauls. Uh, yeah. But he but he's like uh, Chester Russ's buddy. Yeah. He's, he's, he's just, just hanging friend. on. He's his turtle, if you will. Yeah. He's just his Those friend. Entourage fans out there. Um, let me see. Where's Paul Calderon in, in there? I am Dibbe. I am Dibbe. Oh, I gotta go to the second page. Oh wow. He's wow. A big nobody. Salma Hayek, the TV dancing girl, gets a higher credit than Paul. Calderon. I think they just went as order of appearance on yeah, the IMDb. Either that alphabetically, maybe I don't know. Uh, let's see. Paul Calderon. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Mark Lawrence, by the way, was Sam the bellhop, the old man in the beginning. Okay. Wow, I don't see Paul Calderon. Where is he? Oh, yeah, he's just. Oh, there he is. Oh. Okay, Norman. Norman. That's right. Now it's clicking. Yeah. Norman. And That's so a long way to go to get to Norman. Yeah, and it's really funny when they're talking to him because uh, they're obviously super messed up. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. it's it's late into New Year's Eve, and they and there's many empty bottles of Cristal everywhere. Yeah. We get the whole. I never used to drink champagne until I drank Cristal, and everything else is piss and Cristal. Yeah, weird. It's very Tarantino. It is very Tarantino. A lot of the, I mean, obviously he wrote and directed it, it <laughs> but a lot of this is. A lot of Tarantino crammed into a very short amount of time. Yeah. And the <laughs> basically, they're like, look, here's the deal. You got to hear me out, and I'll give you 100 bucks if you hear me out. Mm-hmm. And Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. So, so they lay out the plan. Yeah. And, and Ted immediately says no. He's done. He's, he's literally, he quit his job right. before picking up the phone to answer their bullshit. Um, but, but basically, because he said, why do I have all this stuff? And Tarantino says, okay... Uh, leave all the other bullshit, bring the, the hatchet, the block of wood, and the ice over to the bar. Yeah, the weird one is the nails. Oh, that's right. There was five nails. Nails and twine. Oh, but we get we do have... That's because I was mentioning earlier with the, the witches segment that everybody's just ordering weird shit to get Ted to show up right. for plot purposes. Yeah. But this one is paid off because somebody asks Tarantino, maybe it was Bruce Willis, maybe it was Paul Calderon, why, why four nails or why five nails? And I'm sure it's right in front of me, what, uh, the number, but it doesn't matter. Why yeah. four or five nails? And he says that's how many Peter Lorre ordered in The Man from Rio. Oh, okay. So basically, all the stuff they ordered is, is directly from the TV show. So they were up watching Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Yeah. And The Man from Rio shows up. And they start talking about doing it. And basically, in The Man from Rio, it's a guy going around, and he's betting people that he can light his cigarette lighter... 10 times in a row and if he doesn't he gets to chop off their finger right 
or but if they do do it, they can take the car. In and, this in this and, one, it's a car. Yeah, right there. Well, I there's a, a car like in the it, other. It one. was a car in the, in the so original they're both time. cars. Okay. If the person can light the cigarette lighter ten times in a row, you either get a car, you get a car, or you lose a finger. And as Tarantino points out, he's like, well, I'm not Peter Laurie. I'm not traveling the country collecting people's fingers. I'm not a weirdo like that. Right. But Paul Calderon says, I bet my lucky Zippo can do it, and I'm going to get your brand new red car. Right. Which was actually Vincent Vega's car in Pulp Fiction. Yes, it was. And Tarantino owned it in real life. It was actually stolen. Oh. Yeah. It got stolen. Uh, that's too bad. Um, so Ted immediately, immediately is like, nope. Not, not <laughs> happening. I'm, I'm out and, and tries to run away. Yeah. And proceeds to be like, look, here, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you just listen to me. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, fine. I'll get a hundred bucks and if I just listen to you. And so. 60 seconds. 60 seconds. He just starts throwing out hundred dollar bills mm-hmm. talking about how, look, I'm going to have somebody do this. Once again, very Tarantino. Yeah. Just throwing hundred dollar bills on the table being like, oh, look, somebody's going to chop off this finger. Right. Or not chop off this finger. But they're going to get paid 1200 bucks. Could be you. Could be a Mexican maid. Could be some bum. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But doesn't somebody's going to do it. Do you want to do it? And he's like, sure, fine, I'm in. And so we get set. Yep. We get set. And first click, doesn't light. Ted chops Chop. off the finger, grabs the money, and bounces. Takes right off. Oh, so funny. And in uh, one of the great turn of events, uh, so they're, they're scooping everything up. Paul Cotteron's losing his shit because his pinky just got cut off. Yeah. Obviously. Oh, and the bucket of ice is there just so they can throw it in there. So they can throw it in because they got a doctor on standby at the hospital. Right. Ready to go. And as Ted goes, takes the first elevator, just savagely takes the <laughs> elevator, doesn't even wait for him. Yeah. He's gone. They come hauling ass down the hallway towards the elevator. Tarantino trips the ice and finger <laughs> spill all across it's the hallway. So funny. Uh, Jennifer Beals is just like, you know what, guys? I will see you later. Thanks for the sandwich. Yeah, I'm going back to my room. I'll see you later. And, and she takes the stairs. She does. Yeah, she's like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking. I'm not. I'm yeah. not going to even hang with these guys. I am not going to the hospital with you. Uh, and like I said earlier, post credit scene, elevator door opens up, and it's uh, Diana, the the witch from the opening bit. Yeah. And uh, that is 1995's Four Rooms. Yeah, I really liked it. It was the first time I'd ever seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think that it was, uh, like, he was just a little too manic. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he was, like, 30% less manic, I think his performance would have been better, and I think the movie would have been a little You're bit better. 12. I need you yeah. at, like, an 8. Yeah, right. That is exactly, <laughs> that's exactly how I felt. Uh, but, yeah, it was very much just a part of the Tarantino collection. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, a lot of just little, you know, the little touches, the... The red apple cigarettes. I think yeah. there was a big Kahuna burger somewhere in like a bag in the background or something. All yeah, the little probably. tiny dishes. Uh, it was funny big Kahuna. Why well, it just clicked in my head. Um, Romeo and Michelle's high school reunion is um, part of the Tarantino universe. No, really? Because he was actually he was dating Mira Servino at the time that they were filming that, and the scene where the two of them are in their apartment deciding whether to go to the reunion. You can see. All the empty wrappers and bags, they're eating Big Kahuna burgers. That's really funny. Yes, it is. Uh, I also love the concept that Tarantino has two separate universes. Okay. And so the the stuff like Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Yep. And Romeo and Michelle's. And Romeo and Michelle's, apparently. That's all. And I would assume Four Rooms, uh, yeah. if that's the case. That all exists in one universe. And then like Django Unchained and... Um, I forget what the other uh, hey, kill, uh, kill Bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are movies they would go see. So those are movies in that universe. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I would. I f- I, I forget what the actual like I, order I, is because it's like I do agree with you um, to a point. I would say everything he did post Kill Bill. I yeah. think Kill Bill's part of it. Um, well, Kill Bill is. Kill Bill isn't because it's uh, Fox Force Five. Oh, that's that's Kill Bill. Oh, look at that! And so, if you break it down, so is Death Proof part of it? Or is Death Proof a movie they would go watch? Death Proof would be a part of it. Okay, but so the people Planet in Terror, Death Proof. but Planet Terror, the, yeah, people in Death Proof would go watch Kill Bill, Planet Terror. Okay. Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what would happen. Very very clever. Yeah, or Kill Bill. Huh. Yeah. I like that. I, I like that. So, like, Hateful Eight is like a movie 
that Vincent Vega would go see. Correct. Very cool. I like that. And, of course, Four Rooms is part of that universe, and that was Four Rooms that we just covered for our New Year's episode. Yeah, Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's, It's everyone. been a 2018. It has. It's been a year. It's been, <laughs> it's been a year. It's been a year full of weird movies. And you mentioned to me off, off air uh, that you have a list of bad movies we got to cover. So people yeah. seem to like torturing us with bad movies. Yeah, I have a list of movies that are just atrocious Okay, that uh, people have suggested. And good movies. And, and people have suggested good movies. Uh, the big one that I keep getting is Gladiator. Okay. Gladiator is the one that people want us to do. Next week, I was planning to do Anchorman. Okay. Are we cool with that? Yeah, we can do that. All right. We'll do Anchorman next week. Maybe the following week, we'll do Gladiator, and then we'll start peppering in some more <laughs> shitty movies. To, yeah, to right, do. right, right, I right. Need a, I need a break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Santa with muscles. Uh... Well, it's also not been a very forgiving December for me. I didn't like... Uh, I didn't like planes, trains, and automobiles. That's right. You and said then, the Hangover was better, and people torched you on on comments and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. Hot uh, takes. Hot takes. And then what was the other one? We watched the one after that. Battlefield well, Earth was terrible. We watched Battlefield Earth. That was terrible. And then it sucked. And then there was another one. One of the Christmas ones I didn't like. Uh, for Christmas, what did we do? We did. You picked them all. I know. I we did. did. Die Hard. We I did love Die Gremlins. Hard. Gremlins. Uh, the Muppets Christmas Carol. All right. Well, maybe those were just the two movies I was thinking yeah. of then. Because yeah. uh, I, I loved... think it was Planes and Trains that, that, that kind of set you off. Because that was right yeah. before Christmas. We did it post Thanksgiving. Also, um, the people on the live stream, they haven't witnessed that yet. But uh, the people that are listening to this mm-hmm. uh, or watching it on the post video, Ooh. Um, Muppet Christmas Carol, yes. that was a bit of an adventure. Yeah, that was, we, we, we took a couple of uh, exits there. We, yeah. we took an exit or two on that one. Yeah, that's yeah. what happens when you do the entire month's show. In one day. In one day. In one fucking day. In one morning, not even yeah. a day. Yeah, we got up. Bill had a show up at 9 a.m. To do oh. all of them. By the time we got to the Muppet Christmas Carol. I don't show up to my job at 9 a.m. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that's my dedication I don't to wake show. up at 9 a.m. That's the dedication to yeah. this show. Yeah, right. I'm not even awake at 9 a.m. Um, <laughs> I know. Jesus. But that is the dedication we have to this show. So thank you, everybody, for checking out that movie show. By all means, share it with all your friends. Tell yeah. your friends you got to listen to this movie show, that movie show, that app. Uh, it's on all your podcasting apps. Basically, wherever, Everywhere. wherever you listen to podcasts, type in New Age Insiders Pop, and you will find that movie show on there. Yes. We're also on social media, at Mike Went, at Liam NAI. Bill Neville, NAI, he's on assignment today. Hashtag that movie show. And please let us know what you would like us to cover. And for those of you on the live stream, stick around because we're about to watch Santa with fucking muscles. Yeah, we are. (laughs) I can't wait. See you next time, everybody. Bye, everybody.